Vintage Audio Attic Repair and Restoration. Here's a way to do a uh, kind of a quick test on any amplifier you may find out there uh, that you can plug in anyway. You'll have to power it up to do this, but it's a simple test and um, it kind of can give you a basic idea of the uh, amplifier's health. Kind of like taking your blood pressure or your respiratory rate. It's not the end all, of course, but um, it can give you a lot better idea than uh, just taking something home and hoping for the best. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to check the DC offset in a piece of equipment. Um, first, you have to plug it in, obviously. To turn it on and we'll do that with this uh, Rotel uh, RA610. Um, the power power buttons right here um, I saw it light up so that's good. Um, in this particular unit it was built in the early 1970s. It has no protection uh, built into it. It has no speaker relays. So in this unit's case, it's on and it's uh, ready to go. You don't hear that distinctive click. Um, it supports uh, two sets of speakers. And what you need to have is some sort of a Maldi meter. You know, it doesn't have to be anything uh, fancy. It doesn't have to be anything special. Digital uh, is the way to go though. Much easier to read. Um, instead of an analog meter, but here's a fairly inexpensive uh, Maldi meter that you can get, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks, um, and you don't even have to have one this nice. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to check the DC voltage at the speaker outputs, which is called, a lot of times you'll hear them say, the DC offset. So we're going to check that real quick. We've powered it up. I've put my leads, the negative uh, from the meter into the negative of the uh, speaker output and the positive to the positive. Um, as I said, one thing you've got to uh, make sure that you do, or this is not going to help you as far as a test, is to make sure, I'm going to go around to the front of the unit, if I can, and get a little bit of light here. Can I get to it? Yeah, I guess. I guess you can see it. Um, I'm going to push. I hooked it to system one, and I'm going to push the speaker button for system one. And I am in the uh, right uh, speaker. Uh, yeah, I'm on the right right channel. So, and we take a look at the meter, and it's really here. Maybe I should set the meter up, not get so much glare. Maybe I'll get more. I don't know. But you can see uh, that's very good. You know, we've got, you know, three, four, two, three, four millivolts. Uh, if you're anywhere around there, zero is ideal. You know, I mean, zero is what you're, everybody shoots for. But um, just two, three, four millivolts, um, that's really, uh, it, you know, it's about as good as you're going to get. So um, I'm going to check the other channel now. All right. <clears throat> Try to avoid some glare here. <clears throat> I've got it in the left speaker now. I've moved it from the right, which is up here at the top, down to the left. And, um, you know, again, two, three, four millivolts. Um, you know, that's excellent. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own opinion, what's, uh, what's okay and what isn't, just like everything else in the world. But um, you get anything under 20, 30 millivolts, uh, you're probably in pretty good shape. Now, I have to say, this isn't your typical amp off the street. I've already uh, refurbished it uh, several years ago. I've had this amp about 10 years, but um, you know, I, I, you're probably not going to get something that's that's this close, but you may, you may. And then the whole key is not to see 100 or above millivolts. Does that mean anything's broke? 
Maybe not, but it certainly means it needs to at least be checked checked on and it, it, at the least adjusted. So um, this just gives you an idea of how you can do a quick check and you don't need anything hooked to it. You know, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my vinyl stores have, oh, just a shelf, you know, with some equipment on it. You know, it's almost an afterthought. It's like their, uh, you know, their dad had it, and they just want to get rid of it, and they bring it in, and the people put it back on the shelf, and you know, they put a price on it, and they say it works great. You know, I mean, they haven't even really checked it out at all, but they say that. But this gives you a chance, and like I said, you don't need a pair of speakers, you don't need a CD player, you don't need anything to. Uh, do some basic tests to make sure that uh, the amp is at least uh, somewhat healthy. I use the record store as an example where you might find uh, stereo equipment, but also like you guys that find um, find stereo equipment on on Craigslist. It's a great little uh, uh, test to do. You go over and look at an amplifier or receiver and it's easy to carry with you and um, you know and it makes you you know you're more it makes the uh, other person think well this guy maybe knows a little bit what he's talking about and you know you can measure it and if everything looks good great for you and if something doesn't look right like maybe the left channel looks good but the right channel has a couple hundred millivolts of uh, DC offset on it you'll, you'll know that and it may be a little bit of a bargaining chip uh, between you and the seller because you can show them look there's something going on here with this uh, piece of equipment so I hope this helped you out and y'all have a good day visit vintageaudioaddict.com for more repair and restoration tips on your vintage audio equipment